In this video, I will be trying what might be the most exciting sketchbook and paper that I have ever tried. And let me tell you, I couldn't be more surprised and confused at the same time. I know this might look like a regular sketchbook with regular white paper, but it's not. You are looking at a sketchbook made from stone paper. Yes, you heard me right, paper made from stones. Something I didn't even know existed until a few weeks ago. And even though it might look like regular paper and in some ways also behaves like it, it does come with some pretty wild features you probably would never expect. As a professional artist and YouTube creator, companies send me stuff all the time. And a couple of weeks ago, I was sent this sketchbook here by a company called Etched. And it kind of caught my interest. Now, just so you know, this video is not sponsored by the company and this is also not an endorsement or review of this product. I don't get any money or anything for this. They just sent me this sketchbook to try it out for myself. No strings attached. And since this has kind of sparked my interest, I thought I'd take you all along with me when I try it out for the first time. I just want to try this thing out as a piece of art material and see if this miraculous sounding stone paper is actually usable. And you never know. For all I know, this could even be better than regular paper. If I just go by the claims and the labels, this revolutionary sounding sketchbook could be an eco-friendly game changer in the world of art materials. So what is the first thing you do when you have a fresh, untouched sketchbook in front of you? Well, of course, you break out the drawing tools and... Wait, did he say drawing tools? I probably cannot draw. Well, I can't, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Don't worry though, I'm also gonna paint something later in this video to see how that works, but first I wanted to see if I can use this stone paper to make a decent drawing. I'm not gonna talk too much about my drawing technique in this video. It's just as weird and distinct as the way I paint. But basically, just like with my paintings, I mix a bunch of different tools and techniques to create various effects. If you want to see the full process and the materials I used for this, I suggest you head over to Patreon where you can find a real-time video and a list of all the materials I used to create this drawing here. Spoiler alert, it's quite a bit. On the rare occasion I find the time to create a drawing, I like to do it just for the fun of it. And I like to draw whatever the hell I want. And since I just saw the new Batman movie, I just couldn't resist. And honestly, it's kind of the perfect subject for a black and white medium like charcoal. If you haven't seen the movie, by the way, I can highly recommend it. The Dark Knight meets Tim Burton's Batman meets True Detective. 10 out of 10 for me. But getting back to the paper, the big question is, can you draw on it? Is it like paper? And the answer to that is a definitive yes. It's surprisingly paper-like. I have used all kinds of different papers in my life including paper made out of plastic. But I have to admit, I have never tried or even heard of paper made from stone before. The paper itself has a curious feel to it. If you feel it for the first time, it feels incredibly soft to the touch. Less like paper and more like a piece of fabric. But not only the surface, the paper itself also feels much softer. I don't know how to describe it better, but it almost feels like wet paper. It's super soft, and very flexible. When you draw on it though, you don't really notice any of that. The pencil glides on the surface and you can draw pretty effortlessly. You can create smooth gradients and sharp lines and even charcoal behaves surprisingly similar to how it would on a regular piece of paper. One thing that I have noticed is that since the paper is so soft, it's also a bit easier to accidentally damage and carve into the surface with a pencil that's maybe a bit too sharp. I wouldn't hold it against it though, since you can have the same problem with regular paper as well. One thing that I can say though is that this paper overall is much much more prone to kinks and crinkles. Maybe it's due to the fact that it's so soft or maybe it's just because this particular sketchbook paper is fairly thin, but this is definitely something that I have noticed. I think graphite also might look a bit brighter than on regular paper, but I didn't do any extensive testing or comparison, so I'm not exactly sure and honestly, I don't really care. From a day-to-day -day practical point of view, drawing on this works for me and it actually works surprisingly well. But speaking of drawing, before we get to the second and real surprising part of the sketchbook, 
I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. As you know, Skillshare is the online learning community with thousands of classes on all kinds of different topics. There's nothing really you can't learn there. But I want to recommend you something genuinely useful for everyone who is struggling with fundamental drawing. And that is Gabriel Briquet's class, Learn to Draw, Daily Practices to Improve Your Drawing Skills. A super simple and easy to follow class on drawing fundamentals, super useful for everyone who wants to improve their drawing skills a bit, and a very easy to access place to start. It has a bunch of useful tips and exercises, so if you want to check it out, use the link in the description below. And since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first 1000 who use the link in my description will get a one month free trial to Skillshare. So I highly recommend you check it out if drawing is something you'd like to improve. But getting back to the main focus of this video, when I use a sketchbook or paper, nine times out of 10, I actually use it for painting and not for drawing. So naturally, I wanted to see how painting on this paper would look and feel like. And even though I stayed on theme with the scene from the new Batman movie, the reference I picked for the painting couldn't be more different. It's super vibrant and intensely colorful, the ultimate test for any painting surface. If you have ever seen me paint on paper before, you know that I like to seal the paper with an acrylic medium before painting. And I did that here too. But while I was doing that, I noticed something. Something so surprising that it might actually be potentially a game changer. This paper did not buckle. When paper gets wet, it expands and shrinks, causing it to buckle and wrinkle. Every watercolor artist knows what I'm talking about. And the same thing happens to a lesser degree when you prime or seal the paper. But not here. After applying my usual acrylic medium, I was astonished to see that the paper was absolutely unaffected by the moisture and it stayed completely flat. In hindsight, I have a feeling I wouldn't even have needed to prime the paper because it seems like the paper is non-absorbent, but I would have to try that out before I can be sure about that. What I am sure about though is that painting on this paper is not an easy thing to pull off. The surface is already incredibly smooth and applying a coat of acrylic medium has made it even smoother and more slippery. Again, maybe I should have skipped this part and just painted directly onto the paper or perhaps I should have tried a more traditional gesso, but I didn't, so I just had to roll with it. Not a big deal though, as I'm used to painting on very smooth painting surfaces and I know my ways around it, but for someone less experienced, this might be a bit difficult and frustrating. But on the other hand, thanks to the non-porous nature of this paper and the smoothness, the colors look so incredibly vibrant and intense, it's kinda unreal. So unreal in fact that my finished painting looks more like a digital piece of art than a traditional painting. Even though this small color sketch didn't take me more than a couple of hours, I still had to paint it in two sittings. It was just too small and just too slippery for me to finish it in one. But this also allowed me to get a feeling for how it is to paint in layers and it works just the way it would on regular paper. Now, as I mentioned, this is not an extensive review or anything, so I won't really go into the claim of environmental friendliness in this video. I'm always skeptical when I read things of that nature on a product, but I just don't know enough about this new kind of product to comment on that. Maybe some of you who are more familiar with this product category can comment on that in the comment section. The only thing that I can say is that I'm surprised. Drawing on this not only works, but it's kind of fun. And painting on this has some serious potential. The paper is different. It feels different. It behaves a bit different and I kind of like that. And it's water resistant and it doesn't tear. Two things that really sets this apart from its traditional counterpart. Granted, I only did one painting and an oil painting at that. It might be a bit too early to make a judgment here, but it's at least promising. I have no idea how things look regarding gouache, acrylic or watercolor. I have to say I'm very curious if water-based mediums even work on this surface. Maybe some of you have tried this already and can let me know if this is even something that's possible. The last thing I was curious about with my testing is whether the tape would peel off or if I would completely ruin my painting here at the last minute because the tape permanently bonded with the surface or it might tear everything apart, which it luckily didn't. Having a sweet, sweet tape peeling moment on top of everything else really was the cherry on top here for me. I'll be honest with you, 
I was more than skeptical going into this. I genuinely thought this was just another poor gimmicky art material thing that no one really needs. And that's absolutely useless, but I'm happy to say that my initial intuition was wrong. Granted, I would need to do some more extensive testing before I can come to a final conclusion, but my first impression is very positive. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on this. Is this just another thing that the world doesn't need or is this a potential game changer as far as art materials are concerned? Also let me know in the comments down below if you want to see me draw more. I can't do it, I know, but I would still do it just for you. If you want to check out the paper for yourself, I'll have a link to it in the description below. And with that friends, I wish you all a wonderful, inspiring day. See you in the next video and yeah, have a good one.